breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty. Mornings on 1017 FM and 710 Kiel. On the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline with Mike and McCarty, Cattle Parish School Board member Barry Rochelle joining us. Barry, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are y'all? Well, we're doing well. Have we calmed down after a good night's sleep? Did we get a good night's (laughs) sleep? (laughs) I I slept like a baby. I got home and got to uh, got to watch tennis. Uh, So it was. It was it was good. Slept like a baby, night, up every two hours, screaming. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 not, not me. I like that. I, I very clear conscience. Slept like a baby. You got uh, into kind of a heated discussion with Craig Lee, who got up to the podium and uh, called you out by name, calling you a hypocrite, and you stood up and uh, you shouted back at him. Uh, explain kind of what happened for people who don't know what went down. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, it, the, it, well, there's multiple things that, that, that happened. Uh, one, the, and there were quite a few people there that continued to say that we didn't follow a process. We didn't follow our timeline. We, d- we did things and changed, which just absolutely was not the truth. The fact is we put a timeline together of of everything that we were going to do, when we were going to do it, uh, with deadlines. And the public was fully aware of all of this. And we followed our process step by step by step and uh, in the exact timeline. And, uh, you know, and in that timeline, we had, um, you, you know, 18 different, meetings with different uh, employee and organizational groups, community, uh, faith leaders, students, economic development, PTAs, community leaders, and goes on and on. We had 18 of those. And, um, and so anyway, the, and, 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 and so that, that was kind of the stage that was set and really truly that's what everybody was saying. But this, and, and I really, I don't know this Craig Lee more than I do a man on the moon. And, um, and he crossed the line last night. He, 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 he really did. He crossed the line and, uh, and, 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 you know, when people do have freedom of speech and, 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 and I think people know me well enough and know, know that, that I'm a Christian, that I'm a believer and and the word tells me to, to do all that I you know to wear the armor of God. And when you've done all you can do is to stand. And uh, I wasn't going to let him say the things that he did and think that it's okay to do it. He called you a hypocrite because of what? Well, and I'll tell you that. <laughs> I, I, they, you, 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 they, it was that, that's the really strange part is uh, the uh, each of the board members who gets an opportunity to pray. We have 12 board members. There's 12 months in the, I represent District 9. It's the ninth month. So I get to open us up with prayer in the ninth month. And, uh, and in my prayer, I just prayed that we would have unity. The, the unity I'm speaking of in my prayer is unity of spirit. That's what, that's what God's word tells us, that we should have the fullness of of all that comes with the unity of spirit and obviously he did not receive that uh very well and and i in in his words i think i guess or in his belief he thinks that unity means if i don't agree with him then there is no unity and um um, and from what I could tell, I, I heard from people from all over Caddo Parish, um, and <laughs> and and they uh, uh, and lots of words of encouragement of going. I certainly did the right thing, uh, and not to have very much expectations from from him uh, that that's 
kind of the way that he is. And um, and that's a shame. Uh, Let me um, ask you this, it, Barry. Barry Rochelle, Caddo School Board member. They're calling for you guys to possibly interview other candidates, maybe calling a special meeting. Do you see that happening? Has there been any talk about that? The, hey, you know, I'm one member of 12. And the, personally, I, I, I don't see it happening. We we followed, again, the, 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 the procedure we put together, we followed it line by line. And, um, and as we voted to, or to determine we, there was a scoring that we did when when we did that with the six that had been we've narrowed down to six. The uh, uh, Mr. Burton received twice as much or twice as many points right. as the next closest one. Which now what that means is is that means every school board member or basically every school board member. Voted for Mr. Burton as the number one or the number two individual. I mean, every single one of the school board members would have had to do that for him to have received 58 points to, I think, the next nearest one. And don't don't hold me to this one. I think it may have been 27. It, it may have been 28. Don't, I, I, I don't remember the exact amount of points. And you know what? When When you have that much consensus on a board... Which obviously it doesn't. You, the, the points may not be reflective of some of the things that have happened. It, but when you have that kind of consensus that every board member said that this person is my number one, and, and that's and that's two. what sold it for me, Barry. Yeah, uh, I mean it, the uh, well, it's so that made it very easy. Um, and 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 I'm telling you that. Our children, our students, our staff, our teachers, everybody that, that, that works for Kettle Pair School System deserves to have the best superintendent we can get and deserves for us to have this person in place in, 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 the, in the quickest manner that, that we can. Now, with saying the quickest that we can, I'm not saying rush because the original timeline that was actually put that we put in place was faster than what we than what we actually changed it to. We actually stretched it out a little bit longer so that we could have 18 different uh, groups come together and put together. As some of them continue to say, what did y'all do? How did y'all come up with the with the, uh, uh, the 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 type characteristics that you want? Well, we brought eight. We had eighteen community meetings around the the city, the parish, and 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 and, and we put all this together to pick. Let me ask you this, so, Barry. Barry, Barry, if there are some that would say, maybe if you did some interviews. One of those other candidates might have stood out, might have showed you something that you would go, you know what? This person might could be our next leader if you only did the interviews. How do you respond to that? Uh, um, Two-edged sword. Uh, uh, sword is not the proper word. The two, two items there. One, and I have to speak for myself, is... I reviewed all of the information that every candidate submitted. I also did quite a few hours of research um, on the six. And from my own personal research, I already had a very good grasp, and I'd like to believe that the rest of the board did the same thing. Um, then once we received more information, that because that, there was some information that we received at the exact same time as, as the public received during the board meeting last week. I took all of that information and, 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 and as each candidate was, was, was sharing their information and every, all of the responses that were there, they never, and those questions were specifically designed from the questions that 
that the, the uh, community and the board also, mm-hmm. they were designed so that we and the public could get the best snapshot. Now, I ranked all of them myself. I didn't. I didn't need somebody else to rank them for me. But they, 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 and and I ranked them through that information alone. That was my scoring. It, it, they, it, there was nobody. I mean, this this was this was almost like David and Goliath, in my opinion. That's mine, and I believe the board. You know, uh, you know when you when you see the points that were there, I believe the consensus was there also. Is there a possibility that there may have been another one? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, and again, this is my, I'm one of 12 votes. I, I, I looked through all of them. None of them could have said anything more than what I read about them that they submitted and or they said it would have changed my mind. They, the, uh, so you're a hundred percent comfortable with your decision. You stand by it and let's move forward. Oh yeah. And, 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 and that's me. Uh, the, uh, now granted, and you know, I don't know how much time the public and some of those individuals had to, had to say, and, and it, you know, it's, it, and last night was exciting. You know, the, the uh, I wake up every day and, and, and I, uh, I am excited, and I expect the Lord to do something good in and through me every day, and um, and that was exciting for me. I really, I really enjoyed that. You know, uh, the uh, the with with what Mr. Lee had to say. You know, it's the the um, and the encouraging words that I have received from so many people. People know my heart. And they expected nothing less from me than my response than to stand up for myself. Mm -hmm. And the same people that know him expected no less from him and the way that he acted and the things that he said. So, you know, God's word is true. And it says that you will be known by your actions. And, um, and 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 I and I tell you what I like people standing next to me, and I do believe I work with a board that is is just is is a board of believers. Mm-hmm. All right, and, Mary, uh, look, we're up against the clock. I appreciate that, okay. and um, we appreciate you taking time to talk with us. Well, thank you, guys. You guys are just a great source of of information, and for keeping everybody up to speed and up to date. And um, and I really do appreciate y'all not. Uh, well, I just appreciate y'all just getting the facts and getting the truth and uh, and and sharing it because we can't always get it out there on our own, and you guys are a great source. Thank you, Barry. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Barry. Okay. Have a blessed day, guys. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mike and McCarty, 1017 FM, 710keel.com. Back with more of Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. The only thing don't like about this. I have to move my monitor to see Ruby. I know. R- Ruby, um you you we might need you for this too. I'm I'm I have a bad case of pib today. Uh-oh. Um Uh-oh. I'm driving into work. It's 4:30. I don't know what time it is. And it's three lanes going west on I-20. Okay. This is such a pet peeve for me that I might curse today. <laughs> Ruben, I'm just giving you a heads up. If, if it's Appreciate in the car, it. I may be right with you. Uh, I'm driving down in the left, the the, the right lane. Okay. There's no, really no traffic. Right. Not much at sure. all. Sure, right. And I was planning to take a picture of the lottery billboard right there at the fairgrounds because I wanted to take a picture of the, the jackpot. Yeah, and so 740 I'm, something. I'm going slow to, you know, make sure that I could pull over and safely take a picture. Well, in the far left lane, the far left lane. It's me in the far right lane, middle lane's empty, far left lane, there's a a van from a local hotel, a a local hotel that's kind of a nice hotel. Okay. I'm going to, it's going to remain. shuttle? Yeah, shuttle. It's going to remain nameless. You want to know the hotel, uh, you know, if you're the manager and you want to know what your stupid driver was doing, 
You can message us on the Shreveport Security Systems message board. Download the Kiel app, and I'll tell you which hotel. Mike, this starts at about Greenwood Road, where you get off the post office. Okay, I we're, got you. We're coming all Willis the way. Knighton yeah, there. we're coming all the way west. Okay. This hotel shuttle van stayed in the far left lane. Okay. The entire time. Wow. <laughs> Until we got closer to Monk House, where I knew they were going. They're taking somebody to the airport. Right. Okay. I don't well, understand. If there's no traffic, what, what's the issue? If there's no traffic. That's not where you're supposed to drive, Mike. Well, I understand. I wanted I'm to with go, you. I wanted to go past them, and I was coming up behind them. Oh. And I, oh. So you were coming up behind well, them. Well, I was in the far right lane, but I'm like... I could pass him here on the right, but, I mean, proper protocol would be for me to get over to the left. I mean, and there were a couple of other cars that were coming up up and down, and a couple of cars had to go around him on the right. You know, in this process, there were a couple of other cars, too, and a couple of them had to go around him on the right. So, what, you came from the far right lane where you were clear and you could have just kept trucking? Well, that's what I did, but I'm watching other cars... Move from behind him right, to go right. around him to okay. the right. I got you. He yeah. had plenty of time before this to move over. And so I just paced him the whole way to Monk. I'm like, All right, how long is he going to stay in this lane? I really thought about boxing him because so, there was so an 18 get off at the so he couldn't house. get off at Monk House. <laughs> I really uh, thought uh, about boxing uh, him. Uh, and slow down as yeah, he slowed down, not let him over. Him, not let him over. If he slowed down, I slowed down. If he speeds up, I speed up. Who drives like this? Why are they allowed to drive among us? I don't know. It, it drives me. Why are you driving in the far left lane? There's two other lanes that are pretty much empty. Yeah. Why are you? Is it smoother over there? It, I, I was no. just going to say, a lot of times, especially on two lane, on the interstate, if there's two lanes, a lot of times the right lane is toe up. Yep. And the left lane is much it, it is much smoother. But now if if somebody's coming up behind me and I am in the left lane, mm-hmm. I move my happy ass he over. He didn't move his happy ass over. I, and he's a he's a he's a driver of a van. A, he's a, probably a commercial got, driver. He's, he's got to have a, a commercial He's got to have a CDL. He has to have one if he's transporting passengers. And I'm looking at him going, "Are you ever going to move over?" He never moved over till right before Monk House and then he takes the exit ramp. And I thought, he's and he's not alone. There are so many out there like that that shouldn't be driving. Stop driving like your nut jobs. <laughs> Please, you make me. And then I'm he didn't you. get in my way, but he makes me crazy. I'm, I'm with you. I, girl, I, I, I drove 11 hours to Atlanta. Oh, God. I had to, I, I had to mentally prepare myself and go, oh. Oh, we're so late. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. We are. Oh. News next. Yeah. Mike and McCarty, 1017. Oh, by the way, we are going to talk to Billy Nungesser mm-hmm. coming up at about 640. 1017 FM, 710 Kilo, Mike and McCarty. To the show with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Kiel. Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser joining us coming up just after the break. Mike and McCarty, 1017 FM, 710 Keel, and on the free Keel app. You want to download that. Now breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. One hundred one seven FM, seven ten Keel. Mike and McCarty on the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline. The man with the greatest job in the world, Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser, joining us. Lieutenant Governor, good morning to you. Good morning, my friend. How are you? We are doing very well. You're uh, in Frisco, Texas, this morning, but uh, I can't believe Hurricane Katrina was what nineteen years ago. Almost 20 years ago. That's hard to believe. How has this state bounced back in 2024? Well, well I think it's come back uh, pretty good. It's taken a while. Um, but we, you know, we're never more than one storm away from revisiting those horrible times. I know much of the state is still recovering from the last storm. But, um, you know, I tell you, I still don't sleep when a hurricane gets in the Gulf, no matter how weak it is or where it's going. 
uh, those memories are still fresh of riding out that storm in South Plaquemines Parish and the rescue efforts and um, all that followed. But you're right, it's hard to believe it's 19 years ago and uh, what the uh, South Louisiana went through. And um, But the and levees the and dikes system. have been redone, haven't they? Even they stronger? Have, they are, but you know that the wall around New Orleans is sinking. Sea rise is rising. And if we don't put dredges out there and build land to combat that, uh, here, if we don't have another major storm, if eventually the, the FEMA is going to come in and run new models and say, hey, uh, that wall needs to be raised three feet. Um, that's another uh, story is uh, you've got to keep that that land out there building it uh, because as the sea rise rises, that 100-year protection will go away. And worse than Katrina is trying to get the money to keep that wall high enough to keep that 100-year protection. So uh, we got to keep our, our eyes and make sure we're continuing to, to build that coast back up to, uh, to, uh, to be ready for that next storm. You were in town in Treeport last week for the Travel Summit meeting. Um, you again went over some of the, tr the tourism numbers. We are we are beginning to see numbers that are approaching the pre-pandemic level, if not even better now. Are we? Yeah, I tell you, we have bounced back. They expected it to take many more years to get back to pre-COVID numbers, and we are way ahead of most other states. And that's you know, get hat goes off to all the great partners around the state would partner with us with the Rose Parade and all the festivals around the country that we sponsor. Next, in a couple of weeks, we'll be at the London Jazz Fest. Uh, all these music events promoting the year of music have been incredible for Louisiana. And I think, you know, in 2023, we had a little over 43 million visitors. They spent a little over $18 billion. And so uh, we're way ahead of where we thought we could be. But uh, I'll go out on a limb and say, and if we don't break a new record this year, surely next year we'll be back to setting a record like we did five years before COVID. We had a record year all the way up to 2019 where over 50 million people visited Louisiana. So we're well on our way. Our international visitation is up over 16 percent. Um, we just went to the Congre in Canada, which is our largest international partner. And now we've gotten a federal grant to go to uh, Spain, Italy, and I'll be going to India in, in about a month. Uh, another market that we uh, opened doors to Louisiana to the world, thanks to that international grant. So the future is bright for tourism, and our partners around the state have done an incredible job at uh, doing things in their community to attract visitors and then treat them like family when they're there so they keep coming back for more. You say international tourism is up 16%. We Sitting here in Treeport, Bossier, northwest Louisiana, we hear that, and that sounds great, but don't those folks want to go to New Orleans? Is that where they really want to go, and maybe we'll get some residuals? Well, international visitors want to do more than just see the big cities. They want to see how Americans live. So they want to get off the beaten path. And the reason we go to these places and meet with the travel writers and the travel agents is most of those international visitors still use a travel agent because they want to get the most bang for their buck when they're here. So when we can put itineraries together to see all of Louisiana, come here. Uh -oh. Not sure what that is. You there? I'm just going to have to cut that. Well, we lost we yeah. lost the lieutenant governor. Yeah, I think we lost him. Hang oh on. man, I've never heard that before. That's weird. Is that an EAS yeah. test? Of some? I think he's back. Uh, we you got back? You back? We back? We back? Okay. So they want to see more than just New Orleans. They you 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 get a you get a map of of other places where you send them, and we're part of that. Well, and and you know we promote Mardi Gras all over Louisiana. Family friendly, safe, affordable Mardi Gras. All the fairs and festivals, and we get international visitors that will fly into Dallas. Uh, rent a car or take a bus and they'll stop in North Louisiana. Same thing in Houston, those international flights in there travel across South Louisiana. So we make sure we give them destinations across all of Louisiana. When you go to India, explain kind of what you do there. Who do you meet with? What is your, what is your mission? Well, we have events where all the travel agents and travel writers come. We, we, cook some Louisiana-style food, 
Uh, we bring some, some music. We show videos. Our partners meet individually with those uh, tour coordinators to get them excited about putting itineraries together to come to Louisiana. And we go to several different places in that country to meet with those groups. And like in, in, um, in Spain and Italy, we had were hosted by the ambassador at their residence. So people came, we got a lot of uh, press coverage and just get people excited about coming. It has a better effect. It's a lot of work, but to go on these tourism trips, we have a greater impact than just running a commercial locally or sending information. When they can visit with us and see how passionate Louisiana people are about where they live, it gets them excited about booking trips here. And it's worked and it continues to get us great response from these trips. And um, things like that and the Rose Parade uh, and all these trips will be highlighting a year of food next year. And we'll be kicking that off Later this year, where all the screens in New York City will be talking about Louisiana gumbo on National Gumbo Day, uh, which is October 11th, I believe, and 12th, we'll be starting to kick off the year of food and, uh, and promoting all the great food that comes out of Louisiana at these food shows all over the country. We've done the music uh, shows this year. We're wrapping that up later this year with the, the Jazz Fest in London. We just got back from Washington, a great festival up there. So we go with those people that enjoy music to bring them here. We'll do the same thing next year with the Year of Food. You mentioned earlier, and I can't help but chuckle, the, when I think of jazz, I don't think of London. <laughs> <laughs> well, do we, do we bring love- some good Louisiana jazz to them? Oh, listen, that's 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 like taking uh, candy from a baby. It's a great opportunity for us to uh, highlight the great music. I was at the CMA Fest in Nashville. We got to uh, spend some time with Lainey Wilson at her new restaurant where she serves Louisiana seafood, I'll, I'll say. And, um, and to sponsor and have our booth there, all those people there were, like, excited about coming to all our fairs and festivals. We talked about all of them. And um, just a great opportunity to reach out to people that love music and share our music with them. So it's really, we're fortunate to have so many tools in our toolbox with all the fairs and festivals and great talent and great food in Louisiana to promote our states. Most states would die to have the kind of tools in the toolbox we have to promote their state. Louisiana Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser, look, thank you, sir. Safe travels back from Frisco. Great. Y'all have a great day. Mm-hmm. You too. 1017 FM, 710 Keo, Mike and McCarty. Back with more McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. Did you watch the town hall last night? No, I did not. Was I supposed to? Sean Hannity with uh, Donald Trump? No, I did not watch that. I'm sorry. O'clock. Did not. Aaron! Was it good? No, I mean, it was... <laughs> <laughs> it was what you'd expect. Yeah, a love fest. But I did, I, I did tell Dina, I said, can you see Kamala trying to do this for an hour? Mm. Answer questions? And... Well, if they're softballs, absolutely. <sighs> If you're going to throw him softballs for an hour, sure. Come on. You don't really. They're not. If she, you know. They're not just throwing Did you softballs. watch her on CNN, her interview on CNN? That was only 22 minutes, but. And it was pre-recorded and edited, and you know she had the questions in advance. I wouldn't be surprised Trump didn't have them in advance last night. I would not be shocked. Oh, I would. He they doesn't need them. each other. He doesn't need them, Aaron. I know. I, know. I mean, truly, I'm not. I, and 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 you know what? Take the personalities out of it, mm-hmm. okay? Take the personalities out of it. But well, I can't. I just can't stand Trump. I mean, just, 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 let's just look at ideology. I know. I'm. Do you 100% want, understand? I, I'm with do, you. Do you want? I know foreigners, no borders. Not no. only, not only are no. we allowing. Thousands and millions of people into this country 
unchecked, unvetted. I know. But we're paying for everything for them. Mm -hmm. They get first in line for every perk this country has. And they get it for free. The biggest thing I don't understand. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. People like us. You and I have been working for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. What has anybody, what has our government ever given you? Has it get other than a tax bill? I got a couple of pandemic checks. That was kind of nice. Uh-huh. Okay. Got a couple of those. Did, the did, whole world got them, though. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we are opening the door. Oh. Do you want do you want to be able to select your own car? You like your car, don't you? I do you? love my car. Yeah. Can't wait well, to get it back. Uh, well, you won't have the option anymore of selecting what kind of car you get to drive. Oh, please, Mike Martindale. Aaron. Please. Go look at California. Already. I know, but where I'm... Where Kamala is from. Yeah. Do you like cooking on a gas stove? Because I sure do. I don't have a gas stove, but that's okay. We're, we're looking at houses be over my in East Texas. Just mm-hmm. to, you know... And, and that's the first thing I go, oh, oh, it's an electric stove. I don't want it. Yeah, I know. I want to be able to select. I don't want the federal government telling me, well, you can't have a gas I am dryer. so with you on that. I really okay, am. Okay, so take, take personalities out of it and let's look at what. I don't person would change that policy nationwide. I don't, I, Congress would have to step up and make do some you decisions. Do like peace throughout the world? Oh, absolutely do. Yeah. Absolutely. Do we have it right now? Uh, no. We don't. News is next. 1017 <laughs> FM, 710 Keel, Mike and McCarty. <laughs> 1017 FM, 710 Keel, Mike and McCarty. I don't understand this, Mike. This is the epitome of, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. Yeah. It's what it is. And I don't get it because you're hurting your children. Um, There's a report in the uh, Shreveport Advocate. I want to kudos to them today. um, They've got a report that they have. Shreveport Bossier Advocate. My my bad. Shreveport Bossier Advocate. They've got a report today that says um, some of the uh, people that are upset with the Caddo School Board are threatening now to keep students home if the Caddo School Board does not comply with their request, which they want more of the candidates for superintendent interviewed for the job, rather than just one Keith Burton, as they voted to do 7 to 5 last week. Keep your children home if you don't get your way with the school board. I'm mystified. This is an organized effort by a specific group. Yeah, right? the yeah the group is. Um, I'm not sure their full name. They, it's a We the People group, but they have another name that they use as well. Um, Boots on the ground is what they use, and they they're very active in you know lots of things with not just school board stuff with city council with Caddo Commission with lots of things with police actions. They've been very active in a lot of things. It's Brika Peoples, Omari Hosang, and others. But what I don't, I don't, and what they don't understand, and I'm, tr- I'm working to try to get the district attorney on this morning. We're trying to set up a time. Um, they, what they don't understand is that parents can be prosecuted. Parents can face charges um, if your kids don't show up for school. For so many days, they can, you know, you can be held responsible for the truancy of your children. I would bet they probably know the rules. They will probably hold their children out, you know, right up until the, you know, you can get in mm-hmm. trouble and send them back for a couple of days. Um, I just got a message. The, di- the district attorney is unavailable this morning. Hopefully we'll have him tomorrow. We can arrange it for tomorrow. But this is not the answer. You're doing a disservice to your child because your child will then fall behind. Um, teachers will have to help catch that child up. Maybe they can do the work from home. I don't know. But I don't understand why you would do that to your own children. I really don't. Do you understand that no, at all? No, of course not. I, I, 
I don't know anything about the group. I don't know who mm-hmm. they are. I don't know the first thing, so I really can't comment on what their motivation is. They don't think the board followed the process. They don't think the board has done right by the by the kids, by the by the parish, by the parents, by the staff. They think we should at least have interviewed more than one candidate. We should at least see what is out there. But board members have told us, many of them, we did. We they, saw. They, they, they were presented six candidates mm-hmm. by a firm that was hired. They ranked all six candidates. They graded. They judged. And eight of those board members, eight of the 12, scored Keith Burton a six, which was the highest score possible. Eight of them. Um, Independently. They didn't sit and talk about it. Wasn't yeah. it? It wasn't in a, a, a each right. one privately you get, scored. They handed out a sheet of paper, right? And they all quietly filled out their sheet of paper, like score Mike Martindale. What do you think he should be? Score Aaron McCarty. What should she be? Score Reuben Wright. What should she be? Score Keith Burton. And then they tallied them up, mm-hmm. and Burton was far and away almost twice as many points as anyone else. And I just don't understand. I really don't understand how this would be your next and step. Last week, Christine Tharp told us after receiving those scores, she made the decision then to nominate to 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 make the motion that they stop the interviews with Keith because of the overwhelming support mm-hmm. via the scores. So it wasn't a pre-planned, according to Christine Tharp. It wasn't pre-planned. It wasn't, she said she made that motion. She made that decision there in the meeting. They don't agree. They think there are a lot of people who say, think this was, this was well, I, a predetermined deal. Well, I wasn't there. Deal. I'm going by what was told to me. Oh, I know. But I watched it, and I watched it, and it, I, I, the the air got sucked out of the room. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it that it it went so fast, and the seven to five vote went so fast, and then no comment, and then we adjourned. That I was like looking at it, going, "Wow, wow!" But when you look at the scores, it looked like this is the guy everyone wants. Mm-hmm. And Christine Tharp made an excellent point. Why waste any more tax dollars flying these people in? whining and dining them, putting them up in a hotel, and spending money when we all know eight board members think Keith Burton's the best for the job. That's the thing. If we know now, that's who you're going to hire, and, and when move you, on. And when you tell me board members voted zero in their assessment? One did. Of Keith. Aaron, are you going to tell me that's objective scrutiny well you're just gonna go zero there's not one qualification you can give this person that's got decades of experience Mm -hmm. for me the the school board member that gave keith burton a zero um i really don't uh, district three we'll have to look at look ruben can you look up caddo school board district three member for me somebody is shouting at me because i should know um voted keith burton a three that to me says more about you, who you are, that you're just you're just in this to you were in you it to skew a zero. it. Gave Keith a, a zero, right. yeah. You said three, but oh my bad. District three. It's district three. District three is Dr. Terrence Vincent. Yeah, Dr. Vincent. He's the one that's trying to get a new vote, and to give Keith Burton a three, did you have a feud with him? Do y'all have a, an ongoing personal dispute? To give him a zero. You were doing that to try to skew the scores. It, that could be the only thing you would do right, that for. Right. If, if everyone else above, you know, the vast majority thought he was above, uh, uh, you know, way above, that to me looks very suspicious. And I, you know, I don't like that. I, I have very, I'm very suspect of your motives. But it, it, it's frustrating to say today, I'm going to keep my kids home if you don't do what I want. Right. I'm going to take my ball and go home. You know, and you have the option. You know, we, we have vouchers now. You can go get the vouchers and move your kid to a private school if you'd like. We, you can do that. 
It's just real, real frustrating to it's, think it's this is the answer. It is disappointing. These, these, this is the leadership of our mm-hmm. parish. Yeah. When we come back, uh, can we bring Chica in? Is she allowed in here anymore? Well, she, I, I haven't banned her. Okay, I haven't either. So, and, yeah. uh, I, I have to ask y'all about this, this new restaurant trend that I'm kind of thinking would be good. But I'm, I don't know. Right. I want to ask y'all about it. All right. Okay. Tim Fletcher Sports next, 101.7 FM, 710 Keel, Mike and McCarty. See. Back to the show with Mike and McCarty on 101.7 FM and 710 Keel. Okay, we did talk about this a little bit during the break. So as a patron, I'm going to tell you I am all for this. I think this is a great idea. I'm a little bit on the fence. So let's ask Chica from 94.5. Who, your family's in the restaurant business. Yeah. Been doing it a long time. Since 89, baby. New trend that is now coming is coming across the country. Because of technology. Yep. You can make your reservation online for your table. So I want a 7 o'clock reservation. You can now also order your food. Yeah. So that when you get to your table, mm-hmm. your food At comes seven out. O'clock, 7 hopefully. o'clock. Yeah. Your food comes out. Your food's ready. Yeah. It's moving people through the restaurants faster, Correct. Correct. making more money. You yep. can clear the tables faster. Because that's the key in a restaurant business, mm-hmm. turning the tables. Yes, absolutely. There are some people that don't like it, though, because they say, I like the, you know, sitting there and talking to the waiter and the relaxation and not feeling rushed. Yeah. So what's going to win? Why not both, baby? You could do it either way? Yeah, do it either way. Would here's here's the thing. I, I'm going to, as a waitress, right, if I put my waitress hat on, I'm going to make, I mean, I'm going to make more money off the person that wants the experience, right? Mm-hmm. Compared to somebody that already ordered. I didn't. And also my ticket price. So part of a, a, a great waiter, I think, will always show you and and kind of walk you through the menu and tell you what to pair like Mm. okay so okay this sea bass actually goes really good with the sauvignon blanc right like right i I would put these two together Mm -hmm. there's this guy named dexter at lucky palace he used to be there a long time ago and the reason why my family would go to lucky palace was because in the crack hotel Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it, but this is where my family from Tyler would come. My mm-hmm. brother, who's an executive chef and everybody, because he would help us and guide us through the menu mm-hmm. and pair like wines with like Chinese food. We didn't think went with wine. And all of a sudden now we're like, we know. Yeah. So, well, because Quan, I mean, yeah, uh, so, well, was, yeah. was a sommelier. Right, 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 right. And so, I mean, obviously, Dexter had the upper hand there, right? Like learn from the best. Mm-hmm. But. Um, I still remember that guy to this day, and I remember that he always got at least 30% tip, right? Whereas to if we went and Dexter wasn't waiting on us, it was going to be a 20% tip because we didn't get the experience. We didn't get the, you know, that extra Mm -hmm. 10%. And our bill went from four or $500 Right? Sure. To like a, you know, $150 tab. Are any so, restaurants doing this yet? Have you, have you, I haven't you seen anything. Go out to, nothing I haven't yet? seen anything. Okay. Now, I'll tell you what I don't like is when somebody finishes their meal Uh-oh. and their dishes are sitting on the table. It's called pre bussing baby. No. And then they sit there and talk for and they 30 won't more leave. minutes. Yeah. And they won't leave. They oh. won't turn oh, that oh, oh, table oh. I'm over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Has nothing to do with the dishes. That was yeah. a bad. Restaurants hate those people. Well, sure. Don't be those Especially people. Especially yeah. if you've got people in the foyer. Waiting on tables. Oh, yeah. Like at Gibbons, mm-hmm. especially on a Sunday at 1230. Get your butt out of there. We call those campers. And you've been there since 11. Mm-hmm. You know the worst part is? They're Get, always the worst tippers. Of course. Oh. They're always the worst tippers. The most demanding people are always the worst tippers. Yes. Yeah. I'm just, I kind of like the interaction with the waiter. You know, I kind of like, but come over and tell me your special. I always no. ask my waiter's name, my mm-hmm. waitress's name. How many name? times, though, have you pulled up to dinner? And I know that I'm guilty of this, where you're starved. You're tired. You want You've your food ready. You've been peopling all right, day, right? right. It's yeah. a day where you, you guys have meeting after meeting. You've you've done event after day. event. Yeah. And, and you're so peopled out. You just want your meal. You're and hangry, you just yeah. want to eat right. it. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't yeah. want to wait till you get home. Don't want to be happy and, and kibitz. Yeah. You kind of just, yeah. Dining alone is up what? What do they say? It's up like 37%. Oh, yeah. yeah it's but, almost 30%. Right? Yeah. And so sometimes I would opt for that. I like, got no I know problem I could, with it. Yeah. Bring I my Kindle. 
Mm-hmm. Pull up, eat. Hey, cool. Just make sure this Coke Zero doesn't go empty. Cool. Thank right. you. Yeah, Thank exactly. You. And, Thank and you. we're going to go, and I will leave you that 20% tip. Mm-hmm. I think we need that. I think we need that option. Okay, restaurants, we need it. We want a reserver table. We and want quit a- camping. Yeah. Quit camping. Can we start that? Oh, Can we start please. a campaign? We can show up a little pitchforks yeah. and little signs. When you're signs. finished eating, be considerate of your <laughs> server, other patrons waiting to eat. I have an oh. idea. What if we start okay. posters, stickers, or whatever, and you see people camping, and it's a picture of you, and it's instead of Uncle Sam, <laughs> oh, right? You know, wow. he's pointing at you. I want you. It's a picture of you pointing, and it's like, I want you to get up off this table. Oh. What do you think? Go no, leave. I like that. I think our blood pressure's up. <laughs> <laughs> 1017 <laughs> FM, 710 Keel. More breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. One hundred one seven FM, 710 Keel. Mike and McCarty in studio. Introduce yourself for us. Hey, well, I'm Emma Boone. I'm with Visit Shreveport Bossier, and I'm here to talk about Battle of the Bags this morning. So Fun. Cool. It's a big cornhole tournament. Yes, Battle of the Bags. This is the fourth annual cornhole tournament, oh, oh, and um, oh. it goes directly towards nonprofits that benefit first responders and military in our community. Happening Saturday at the East Bank in Hurricane Alley, right? Yes, Saturday, September 7th at the new 7th Tap. Okay. Do I have to have a team? Can I join up with the team? How's that going to work? So you can just sign up. Uh, it's $25 per person. Um, and you can sign up online at visit org, or you can sign up uh, when you get there. Mm-hmm. It starts at 12 on Saturday. And if, you know, I'm pretty good at cornhole. Mm-hmm. Uh, prizes for the winners? Yes. Yeah, so there are some pretty good prizes. So first place gets $500. Second Ooh. place gets $300. Third place gets $200. There's also going to be a live raffle going on. So all of the sponsors for the event have um, contributed really cool gift cards and swag and just all kinds of prizes. And and, the, and you sh- I mean, come on. If you win $500, this is a benefit. I know. Right? I know. You, know. you win $500 and you get to you know. like contribute to local first responders and military. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I'd give them 100 of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, $25 is a small price to, pre- to yeah. pay to help those who keep, you know, our events safe all year long. So it's not just, you're not just... 25 to play. This is actually a donation yeah. mm-hmm. for uh, for the our first responders in our area. That's a great idea. Yeah, so your $25 to register does go towards those first responders and military as well as 10% of restaurant proceeds at the new 7th Tap restaurant. What a great event. It's happening this Saturday. It all kicks off at noon. You want to register when you show up. Get there a little early so you yes. get signed in. Uh, this is exciting. I hope y'all have a great turnout. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. Um, you can register at visit org or shreveportbosiersports.com. Thanks or for you can in. also sign up when you get there. Yeah, yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for coming in. We of appreciate course. it. Yeah. Cool. 1017 FM, 710 Keel, Mike and McCarty. Back to the big stories of the day with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. We were talking um, during a break earlier this morning, and it got me to thinking because you said um, you didn't want to answer a call. Yeah. And and, and so it got me thinking. So if somebody, do you feel obligated to answer the phone? No, 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 no. But it's somebody I know. And I get lots of calls every day. Don't get me wrong. I get lots of calls. But there are some times, and and just like we said earlier, there are some times when I just want to unwind. Sure. I don't want any interaction. Okay. I want to stay away from people. I want to be, I want to ignore people. I don't want to have any kind of, let's commit. Right. But I feel guilty if it's somebody I'm close to and I don't pick up the call. And it's somebody I do care about. There are very few people that I would feel guilty. And in fact, I will, if my daughter calls me, I'm answering. I don't care if, if oh, this yeah. phone rings right now. Yeah. I'll go, you get got this. it. Mm-hmm. My, da- my, da- my daughter's calling. Right. You know, or my wife. Sure. Because that, they know I'm on. If they're calling right now, something's up. Yeah, my my kids are the same way. If one of my kids calls, I'm picking up the phone. Right. Uh, but those are the only two people. Have you? Have, okay. Do you? 
<laughs> you ever seen somebody out in public and you go, nope, nope, nope. You're at Walmart and oh. you duck down an aisle. Oh, Mike, all the time. <laughs> all the time. Okay, okay, good. I'm not the only one. There will be times when I and go. Not everybody. I'm not saying I'm just, I don't want to, but, but it's. There, there are, you know, there are occasions when I will walk into a, a store, a grocery store or Target or whatever, and I don't, now mind you, I don't wear makeup typically ever. I don't dress fancy, but there are occasions when I like go to the pool and then I'm like, oh, I've got to go pick up something. Mm. And so I'll run into the store. So it's even less fancy. Oh, it's even less <laughs> fancy. Yes. Right. And I look, I look like I could have just been on the corner. With a sign. Right. And I'll run in, like, let me see. And that's when I run into those people. Right. They want to chat. And they want to kibitz. And they want to catch up. And they want to, let's go do lunch. And I'm like, just go away. I love you. Don't get me wrong. I love you when I run into you. It's wonderful. But I just don't want to chat I, in the grocery store. I remember store. years ago I worked with a guy and he used to talk about dodging people in the you know in the grocery store and i was at that time i was like oh Ron, come on you know what i know know. i'm totally with him and totally understand as the time as you get older i hate to say this it gets worse every year it seems to get worse you're like oh i just don't want to commit and there'll be and i don't want to hear i know what you you know staying out of trouble will you Yeah. yeah come on I know. If you don't have any conversation, just 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 nod and keep moving. Wave, yeah. Acknowledge, it, hey, keep moving. Mm-hmm. Don't feel obligated. You are not obligated to come over. But they want to come over because they're your buddy. And they love you and they think you hey, love them. Staying out of trouble. And I typically do love Shut them. Up. I do. I really do. But that's not the time when I want to shoot the schnizzle. <laughs> Is schnizzle a word? Yeah. Okay. It, so my thing when I see somebody in a grocery store that I know is I I see them, I wait till they're not paying attention, and I steal their shopping cart. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, well, see, Ruben, now that you're asking for I've, engagement. I've done, it, I've done it many times. But it, but see, that makes it more fun, you know. Yeah, okay. Then you have something to talk about. Uh, then you have a little jokester thing going. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, see, I have, I'm, I'm, I have seen ladies at at the Walmarts. Mm-hmm. Their purse is sitting there in their cart, and they're back, and their purse is open. Oh my! In the cart, and they're they're six feet away from their from their Ugh, from their cart. Not a good idea. I, I just put up a story about a lady getting her wallet stolen at Walmart, Ugh. and and I will say, ma'am, you're exposed. Yeah, that's that's yeah. not a good idea. Bad idea. That's not. Oh, I keep my... Well, okay, you're not. Okay. You know. Exactly. Just trying to help you. It's going to be gone tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Coming up? Still working still on stuff. Still working? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know if you heard back. Okay. 101.7 FM, 710 Kiel, Mike and McCarty. Brad. Back of Mike and McCarty on 101.7 FM and 710 Kiel. No one seven FM seven ten Keel Mike and McCarty. You didn't watch. You didn't watch the Sean Hannity town hall last night. No, I did not. Are you going to? Are you? Are you going to watch the debate? Yes, I will watch it's the Tuesday debate. night. Right, Tuesday night. We're going to carry it here on Keel, beginning at eight o'clock. Eight to ten is the plan. Um, it's on ABC. I think David Muir and someone else are the moderators. Um, Kamala Harris, Donald Trump, two hours. Um, Did they determine, sit down, stand up, notes, mics muted? I mean, they're... Mics muted. Mics muted. I don't know about the sit down, stand up. I'm not sure about that. Typically, it's stand up, but, you know, we'll see. Um, I don't think they're wandering around. I don't think they're going to be allowed to wander around the stage. Um, well, no. That wasn't a good look when he did that, when he hovered over Hillary. I, I was like, stop. Yeah. No. Get back to your side. Nope. Stand behind the podium. Yeah. Be be a gentleman. If he were to be a gentleman, 
He wins a lot of points. So are you one who believes candidates get questions in advance? Um, I think they probably have, you know, here are the 10 topics we're going to cover um, so they can prep for those topics. Because Kamala can't speak without a teleprompter. See, I like when they do a debate when they have like a little bit of a free-for-all where the candidates can ask each other a question or two. I love those where you don't know what Donald Trump's going to ask you. He doesn't know what Harris is going to ask him. Right. I think that is very, very cool. But I, truthfully, I think this will be the only debate. I don't think they'll do another one. No, I don't either. This will be it. Um, and now, then we're in the home stretch. Now, let me ask you something because I... The legalities, not that the legalities matter to the left. If if her numbers continue to tank, are they gonna are they gonna go? Oh, no, this is our candidate. Mm. Can they bring in somebody else at this point? No, I, you know they're 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 with her. They're married to her now. That money all follows her. She raised a ton of money. Um, since they announced, and it's all so that money surreal, goes with her. Aaron, because yeah. when you look at even six months ago, what people were saying about her, what her own party was saying about her, and now she's the greatest thing since, you know, Obama. Yeah, yeah. It, it's going to be fun to watch the debate. I'm going to, you know, of course, I'm going to have my popcorn ready. I might even do some sausage balls. I'm not sure about that, but you know, it's going to be. Tuesday night's going to be interesting. This could make or break either one of them. I mean, if he comes off as, you know, as That's, a... As a I hope he's coached like he was with Biden. I hope so. I hope he's presidential, shows himself we're getting waved by Ruben. Yeah, yeah. So, Tom Gresham's going to join us at 840 this morning, a host of Gun Talk. Um, horrible shooting in Georgia at a school. Um, we want to talk to him about that. 1017 FM, 710 Keel, Mike and McCarty. One hundred one seven FM seven ten Keo. I, I want to. I'm interested in this. I'm intrigued by this Mike the Tiger discussion going on right now. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the governor, whom mostly I support, wants to reintroduce the tradition of putting Mike the Tiger in that. It looks like a. Parade cage trailer thing, trailer, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, decorated cheerleaders all on the top of it. I remember going to games and mm-hmm. Mike would parade around. Um, and I love Mike the Tiger. I don't, I, I agree with those that say it's not the right environment, it's not the right. You're a PETA person, no, not <laughs> what I said. I'm messing with you. People eating tasty animals. Oh, I am a PETA person, <laughs> uh, but not tigers. <sighs> um, so I, I I don't disagree with the people that say, look, it's, you know, leave it. <laughs> he's perfectly fine in his habitat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got a major, was it two, three million dollar digs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, 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 he's living large. Uh, but the governor... He sent some staffers, um, a couple of lawmakers, including Wayne McMahon from Minden, over to the vet school to talk to Mike's veterinarians about, Mm -hmm. hey, let's bring this tradition back. Could we do it? And the veterinarians were like, nah, nah. Let's don't do this. This ain't going to happen. Right. They definitely said it's not happening this weekend. Um, And they're leaning toward this is never going to happen again. We're just not going to do it. And PETA has now sent a letter to the governor urging him to back down from the request, saying, this is harmful to the tiger. Imagine 100,000 people screaming and yelling and drinking and acting crazy, and you're being paraded around there, and you don't know where you are, 
you don't know what's going on, and you do this eight times a year, how many home I games think there are. What they ought to do is put the mascot in there. The guy dressed <laughs> up is it put him in the tr- in the that, trailer. That wouldn't be bad. That would be funny. Yeah, that would that be funny. That would be funny. I think Mike actually traveled to a couple of games too back in the day. They would take him and right. travel and bring the trailer okay. and roll him around over there by the LSU sideline where we were where our mm-hmm. fans were. Um last game I was at, it's been twenty sixteen, I don't know, twenty seven, I'm not sure. Mike was still in his little trailer, and he was rolled around the stadium. They roll him all the way around, and the cheerleaders do a big cheer for each section. And um, I can only imagine how frightening that would be. Okay, let me ask you this. Do they still roll out Bevo? The Texas Bull? The Bull? The the Longhorn Steer? I think Bevo is at the games. I'm not sure. I know Ugga. At Georgia comes out. Okay, but that's a little different. It's a dog, yeah. A, a canine, a dog mm-hmm. is domesticated. They have the horse. They're what, used to people. Yeah. They're, they're, their first instinct for most dogs, not mine, is not to eat people. Yeah, true. You know, true. mine got out of the front door yesterday and right. went after the mailman who was on the porch of my next door neighbor's house. Oh, goodness. And she got out and I'm like, son of a... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it the, the, the dog, the, there's a horse, which the Bron- what, which school has a horse that comes out and runs down the field? I don't oh, know. Yeah. I, anyway, they have one that does that, but it's like, these are wild animals. Mike's a wild animal. Sure. And B- large cats are different than a steer. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. I don't know. Now, I, so I don't know. Maybe somebody's going, no, it will affect the steer too. Mm-hmm. It's. And I, you know, I would tend to. Or I what don't, about the bison? Who, who, true. who? They run. They run. Those guys running next to that bison mm-hmm. around the. See, around I don't the field. like any of the live animals out at a game. I really don't. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think how frightened is that poor animal? And I mean, I think the Humane Society. I think all those pe- those animal groups would say, no, they really shouldn't be at the games. It's frightening. They say it stresses Mike out. They okay, can I can see that rate. with they a tiger. Mm-hmm. Some of them I can see being acclimated. They would love it, yeah. Yeah, they would, you know, the, the bison, if it if it did it since it was a, a, a calf, mm-hmm. if that's what you call a baby bison, yeah. Um, you know, I can see it, it doesn't bother it. it right. the, the animal's completely comfortable. Mm-hmm. I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have an issue with that. My question is... I, I don't think, I don't know. I what? don't know. My question to you is this, and, and, you know, I love Jeff Landry, and I think he's going to do some great sure. things for our state. Same here. But is this his lane? Is it his lane? I'm asking. Right. No, you're right. No. Uh, let's, what let's... is he worried about this? For? We have roads we need to fix. <laughs> we have schools we need to fix. <laughs> right. We why? have tax structures we why? need to fix. Why is this on your uh, agenda? Why, why is this are, on your desk? Why are you in the Mike the Tiger lane? I don't understand that. Yeah. And I, you know, and it may be a pet peeve for him. Maybe he loves seeing Mike the Tiger when he goes to the games, but I don't understand why that's his lane today. And I, you know, I'm worried. About, I'm worried about. Ah, let's get somebody get him back in his lane, because this is really in his lane, and it doesn't look like he studied it or talked to enough people before he said something to. I guess the Illuminator. I don't know, but I was. That was the first thing I wondered. What is he doing? What is he? What's he right. talking about this for? So I don't know. Yeah, where, 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 when? Who put that bee in his bonnet? Yeah, right. Was it him? Was it his wife? Was it a friend? I, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure. But I'm, you know, who who knows? Not for me. I think leave Mike the Tiger in his cage. People that want to go see him. The stadium's right there. Go across the street. Right. You yeah. can see him and right. chat with him, and he's out all the time. Occasionally, he's inside. You know, because they're cleaning or doing something, but. He's out all the time. Yeah. Don't need to worry about it. Absolutely not. Mm. Tom Gresham, uh, host of Gun Talk, heard right here on Keel on the weekends, uh, is going to join us coming up at about 840, about mm. 20 minutes from now. Uh, we're going to get his uh, his his thoughts on uh, concerning the shooting in Georgia mm-hmm. and people saying we need to stop this gun violence. Oh, that makes Tom crazy. We need to stop the gun violence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We need to stop the knife violence. The car violence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll hear from (sighs) him in about 20 minutes. Micah McCarty, 1017FM, 710keel.com. 
Let's get back to the show with Mike and McCarty on 1017 FM and 710 Kiel. By the way, people have been asking messages. Mm -hmm. Do I finally have the Navage (laughs) technique down? Do you? Got it. You do? Got it. Oh, good. Yeah. You you sound better. You're you're all cleared up. Got it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It works? Yeah. How long did it take you? It's a little learning curve. Okay. But, yeah. Once you get it, you get it. Yeah. Oh, good. I How just, often do you have to do it? Well, they say twice a day, like okay. in the morning and then in the evenings. It's not a Navaj commercial. but No, it, I know. It's not. What is, it's, it, what is it? Does it cover your nose, mouth? How does it? it it's got a little thing. We don't get okay. into it. Now, but right. it's but But people, <laughs> I've had people ask me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sorry, if you were listening to us earlier, I, I must have called Ruben a girl. Did I call you a girl, Ruben? Well, you, we were talking so. about. We were I, I talking, didn't hear it, but we were talking about. Then I did, and I didn't say anything. I was very proud of myself. <laughs> we were talking about the. the you know, you said uh, the Kettle Parish School Board members were voting, and mm-hmm. you said like, uh, you know, Mike, in, in, he in, in 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 vote for Aaron and she, and then you said vote for Ruben, she, you know. Oh. <laughs> And, and please don't call HR. I've already, I've already contacted them. Oh, have you? Yeah, 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 yeah. There, there's a meeting oh, after the show. Oh, man. What are your pronouns? <laughs> <laughs> she, he. Oh, goodness. I just, yeah, I, I'm sorry, Ruben. I, I publicly apologize for calling you a girl. That's, How terrible that's, that's of me. That's fine. I don't, How I don't, terrible. I didn't even notice. Yeah, well, good. I got <laughs> upset this morning on the way to work. You, 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 had, an, you had an experience just get so angry and i and it makes me mad that i realize these people are out there among us little bit of traffic this morning 4 30 coming into work quarter to five whatever it was i don't know and i'm in the far right lane there's three lanes on i-20 i'm on the far light right lane in the far left lane is a van a hotel van the hotel will remain nameless we'll name it if you want on the shreveport security systems complimentary message. shuttle it's the shuttle service and yeah obviously he- heading to the aeroport yeah no doubt going to the airport okay this van's in the far left lane okay in me the, and a, in the left lane left lane passing lane the passing lane uh, there's me in the far right lane there's a couple of cars. There's one 18-wheeler that's in the right lane with me, and I'm coming up on the 18-wheeler, so I move over into the middle lane to get by, and that means there's three of us kind of in the lane, and there's another car coming up in the far left lane, and the van just stays cruising along in the far left lane, kind of get by the van, and then the car that was behind the van has to move over into the right lane to go around the van. This all started at about Greenwood Road. This shuttle van... Heading west. Heading west. Okay. This shuttle stayed in the left lane the entire way. Because I slowed down at the fairgrounds because I wanted to take a picture of the Mega Millions jackpot sign. So I slowed down and moved over actually onto the shoulder to take a picture. And here comes the van petering along in the left left lane. lane. Still there. Cars coming up behind him trying to get around him and have to move over. These people are out there. They don't know the rules of the road. Okay, so there are two options here. Either you are an idiot, yeah, totally clueless, or you're a complete dinglehead. Do, do, yeah, do, 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 yeah, do, 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 do mag. Would I have been bad? I w- I wanted to do two things. I wanted to pull over into the left lane in front of them and slow down. <laughs> and make them go around me on the right. But then they'd get back in the left lane. Then they would get you'd back. And you'd be the ass. And the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to parallel them. So when we got to Monk House, they couldn't get off. <laughs> they yeah. slow down, I slow down. They speed up, I speed up. I'm not going to let you over. Yeah. You're not. I know you're getting off at wow. Monk House. I'm not going to let you off. <laughs> I wish you would have done that. I wanted to do that. How bad would that have been? The only thing that would make this story better is if you drove up and the the driver was texting or on their phone. Oh, Oh, my. Yeah. I just, 
Clueless drivers, I have no patience with. How do no they? How do patience. they keep their license? How are they not in wrecks all the time? How are they just oblivious to the rules of the road? Now, I think you have to have a CDL if you're transporting. Oh my! You know, like when mm. I drove the church bus. I still have my CDL mm. from back when I drove it. Now, this was, we called it, the, we had a people mover, which carried about, I don't know, 30 or 40 people. Yeah. And then we had a bus. Right. Um, they're up so I had to get a CDL. Oh, it's, it's, they're up So I'm wondering if, if the drivers of these courtesy vans have to have a CDL. Somebody, somebody let know. me know. I don't know. This one is a moron. Yeah. You oh. gotta have some kind of clue. By the way, if you want to know uh, what hotel, Aaron will share that on the message board. Yeah. If mm-hmm. you don't have it, download the Keel News app. <laughs> and if you want to know what hotel it was, yeah, she'll she'll tell you. You need to fire your driver. Yeah. I oh. uh, almost said grits. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, Tom Gresham joining us coming up in about ten minutes. One hundred one seven FM seven ten Keel. Hey. Breaking news and trending talk with Mike and McCarthy on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. Tragic shooting in Georgia. We're going to talk with Tom Gresham, a host of Gun Talk, which can be heard right here on Keel. Coming up right after the break, 1017 FM 710 Keel, Mike and McCarty. Back with more on 1017 FM and 710 Keel. Well, a tragic situation for people losing their lives in Georgia to a, uh, a shooting. And of course, the left. Never lets a tragic situation go unexploited. Now Kamala has come out calling, saying we have to have this gun violence under control. Tom Tom Gresham, host of Gun Talk, is on the Jack Spring Electric Newsmaker Hotline. Tom, how worried are you if she were to get elected that uh, they're going to make a concerted effort to come after our guns? Oh, I'm not worried at all. I know it's a 100% certainty. She's always said that she wanted to ban guns. He's always said he wanted to ban guns. You know, they are, they just parrot the gun ban lobby's talking points. And it really doesn't matter what the event is, school shooting or whatever it is, they bring up the same things whether or not they would have anything to do with the event, like this horrible shooting in Georgia. They just bring out their litany of gun ban efforts and calls for restrictions. I mean, what do we know about this? We know that what they're doing isn't working. We know that there was a gun-free zone. Those never work. All school shootings are in gun-free zones. We also know the good guy with a gun showed up and made it stop. It doesn't really matter if the good guy with a gun is wearing a uniform or not or if it's a man or a woman. When a good guy with a gun shows up, the murders always stop. Mm -hmm. You made a point. It's been a year or two. And it and it actually as I was getting dressed this morning, I'm listening to some of the comments that they're saying while I was getting ready. And I thought this pibs up Gresham. And now I'm feeling kind of the same way. You said we have to stop calling it gun violence because we don't call it car violence. Uh, that drunks are killing people in their cars. We don't call it knife violence when people stab each other. And it, I, and I thought, you know, exactly he's got right. he's got a point. Anytime anybody uses the term gun violence, they are now participating on the side of the gun ban lobby. This is a term that was created to get people used to thinking that violence equals guns, but the other way around, guns equal violence. And that is clearly not the case when 99.9% of the guns that we own are never used in crime. You know, but it it is a term that I completely and utterly reject. And we should all, every time it's used, call it out and say, stop doing that. And that, that hit me upside the head this morning. I went, you know what? Tom's right. Because we don't call it that if it's another kind of weapon. No. 
if somebody punches their wife all the time, we don't call it fist violence. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, but I'll tell you, take it a little bit further. If you look at the reports from England, they do talk about knife violence yeah. because they pretty much got rid of the guns. But guess what? Yep. Violence is still around because that's a human thing. And now they're trying to figure out, well, how do we get rid of knives? Now, and they, they really exactly. are working on that. They are working on getting rid of knives. That's Absolutely. unbelievable. For, and for those who think that, you know, the Kamala Harris of the world, they're thinking, well, it's just the AR-15s. Oh, don't be a fool. They want every single gun you have. And occasionally, in the quiet moments, they will actually say it out loud. And I have somebody who actually relocated to California for a while and had to actually leave almost every gun they own here. Almost? Almost. They could take, there were pistols, I think there were a couple of guns they could bring. But almost every gun they own had to be left here in Louisiana because the guns this person owned were not legal in California. Well, exactly See, right. Absurd. Now, let's, let's spin that back to your initial question, which is what's going to happen with the result of this election? And look, there are all these proposals and phony programs and platforms and all, and all of that is utter nonsense. The one thing we know is true. And this is where I say, look, I don't care how Trump sounds. I don't care what he tweets. I don't care about anything else. What I do know is that we got three really good justices in the Supreme Court and mm. hundreds of good judges on the bench. And for me, that is the beginning and the end of anything I think about with this election. So if she were to be elected, uh, would, would you anticipate executive orders on gun rules? Oh, absolutely. So she keeps saying on day one, that's her big deal. Mm -hmm. On day one, day one, I will exec, you know, you know, of course, even though they get overturned, it means we have to spend millions of dollars going to court. And the other part of it is, look, if we get the right judges and the right justices, they will interpret the Supreme Court, the Second Amendment correctly. If we don't, they will be activists and they will allow agencies like the ATF to ban guns without there ever being a single vote on it in Congress. Mm. Now, the school in Georgia, this was a student who had made threats, as I, I believe, about a year ago. My, my question to you, Tom, would be, when, when we talk about gun violence, can't we do a better job of when we have these complaints about these kids, let's intervene, let's get them help, let's find out what's triggering this child and do better on that end? Well, no doubt. I mean, it, but it's a two-pronged thing. It's one is how do we prevent it? That's a large question. And certainly if someone is reported as having a problem, a couple of things. One is the authorities need to be a lot more proactive, but also the parents, if they're responsible at all, if you have a troubled child, you don't have your guns where they can get to them. I'm not advocating a law requiring that. I'm just looking for some responsibility out there. But that's the big, you know, overall arching question the question i have is what can i individually do to make myself safer and the people around me safer and i have decided that i will have a gun i will get training i will be responsible and i will make the pledge that nobody around me is going to get hurt and if our, go ahead mike our, our, our freedoms are predicated on the constitution of the united states but if you have those in control, those in power who do not respect or believe in our Constitution, our freedoms are going to erode. You know, it's a great point. People say, well, we always have the Second Amendment. And I always say, you do until you don't. Understand that for some of these folks, a lot of the politicians, they will just simply look at the Constitution and say, it doesn't say what you think it says. And you go, what? And then they go through this gobbledygook and say, well, you know, there's this militia part and there's the other part. And you're going, no, no, no. The Supreme Court has already said it's an individual right. They go, yeah, 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 we understand that. But you don't really have a right to a gun. So you know, while we do have the Second Amendment and we do have the Constitution, for those who don't care about it mm -hmm. or don't honor it, they will twist it and destroy it to meet their particular agenda. So how's California getting away with doing what they've done? Right. <laughs> well, they're actually getting away with it a lot less these days 
because we're getting some really good court decisions on the basis of Donald Trump's judges. Believe it or not, we've gotten good decisions out of the Ninth Circuit, which I never thought I'd be able to say. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Tom Gresham, thank you for jumping on with us this morning, and uh, we look forward to gun talk. Sorry for the text about you available. I didn't mean to send it like that. <laughs> that was rude. You available? <laughs> What are you well, wearing? We will talk about we'll talk about this on Sunday. I want everybody to call in. Let's chat. You bet. One o'clock right here on Keel. One oh one seven FM seven ten Keel. Let's get back to the show with Mike and McCarty on one oh one seven FM and seven ten Keel. The more I hear about this, the more I'm embracing it. Oh, I, I'm absolutely all for it. Uh, you know, I'm I, all for it. New trend in restaurants that is kind of starting, it's starting to creep in. Uh, restaurants have been struggling, finding staff, prices have been higher. They're trying to figure out how they can, you know, make more money without having to raise too, mon too many of their prices for their meals. Um, and so now this new trend is where you book your table online. online. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do it with Open Table or lots of other, there are a lot of other apps you can reserve a, res a reservation. And now, not only do you book your table, but you order your food. So you get with your family and Love you that idea. go over the menu and you order, you know, he wants the mussels and then he wants a ribeye and then he wants a, you know, a rum and coke along with water. Right. You order the whole shebang and then you arrive at your reservation time at seven o'clock your food comes out at 7.05. It's ready. You didn't have to interact with the waiter at all. The food is going to be there at your table. They know what table you're at. They know what you ordered. You've already prepaid online. Now, you can you can add your tip to your credit card or you can give them cash. But I'm it, not pre-tipping. I'm going to tell no, you that. No, I'm, I'm with you on that. Cause, yeah, what if my meal's late? What if the waiter didn't fill up my water again? You know, all that. I'm not even as concerned about my meal being late as I am the attitude. Yes. Yes. How are you tonight? Attitude mm -hmm. is everything. You bet. But this moves the tables along. You know what I mean? They can sure. clear out these tables way faster. And that's the key in the restaurant industry is turning the tables. Yes. You've got to keep the people moving. I, I, I don't know a local restaurant who does this yet. Do you? No, not off the top of my head. No. I hadn't seen one. I would love to know if they're going to try it. Is somebody going to try it? And see if it works for them. Because the more butts they can get in the seats, the more money they course, can make. Of course. That's more food you're moving. Mm -hmm. More beverages you're selling. There will be an occasion where, oh, you were late for your reservation. Your food's cold. Now we got to remake it or we got to heat it up. I mean, there's going to be those things that are going to happen. Um, would you waste food because of it? I, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I've never been in the restaurant business, so I don't know. But yeah. I like it. I like the idea. I'm a slow eater, Okay. I mean, my whole life, mm -hmm. um, even when I weighed, you know, 140 pounds and six feet tall, I was a slow... My, I remember my mom and sister hating my guts and liver because I could eat anything yeah. and, and was still a 140 right. pounds. But my mom clearing the table and I'm still... Sitting at the yeah, sitting at the table, You're still nibbling. And, mm -hmm. and, and and I remember I worked with a guy one time. Goes, boy, you'd never make it in the army. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, you well, well you learn. <laughs> yeah, you know, if I was a fireman, I'd learn. You learn to eat. Yeah, but I but people that sit at a table after they're finished eating for another thirty minutes. Oh. No, that I cannot abide. Restaurants hate them. I cannot abide. Chica said their their family calls them campers. Campers, or that's yep. what they're known in the industry. Mm -hmm. Campers, absolutely. People, restaurants do not like those folks. Don't be they a camper. Want you to go clear the table. They need to get another butt in that seat. Happy Thursday Eve, Friday mm -hmm. Eve, rather Friday Eve. Yes, tomorrow's Friday. One hundred and one seven FM, seven ten. Keel, Mike and McCarty.